managed to make space for this printer in this alcove, which is really good. I was clearing all this area. I've still got my CDs and everything over there. They're all tidy now. This this had a lot of stuff all spread everywhere. So this is directly under my TV. I hardly ever use the TV. So after being recommended by the tech team to download the startup guide from the support tab on their epsom.co.uk site, I uh, took some time out to read that yesterday, over 200 pages. I didn't quite finish reading it all, but that did give me a better understanding of all the functions and features of this printer, which is also a scanner and a photocopier and a fax machine as well. It's like an all-in-one solution. Um, so that was really, really interesting, but a bit mind-numbingly repetitive, as in click here, click there, when I'm not actually doing it physically, you know, it's not the most interesting of things, but the interesting stuff was what it actually does, which was incredible. It does a lot of things, which I was really pleased about. One thing I find very difficult is to how to see the inks, because you can barely notice them. And I, I would say that's something that's not as good about it. I think they should create this better so that you can see through it more. Do you know what I mean? Do it really see through? Because having this like, well, it's like almost cloudy perspex is not very good for trying to see it with the naked eye to check the ink levels. And if the ink levels go too far down, then basically, you know, it can damage the machine. You will still have a tally on your PC or your... Um, mac once you set it up so that's good but if you forget to reset the ink levels when you put new ink in you know it could get way out of hand as to how much ink you've actually got in there and it says always check it with the naked eye to make sure it doesn't go below that arrow because if it does then it's dangerously low and it can damage the machine and so with the naked eye it's very difficult to see which i think is not so good um, but I love it. I'm so happy with it. So now I'm going to plug it in and start going through the rest of the setup procedure. On the back of the machine, uh, this is where it gets plugged in. There's a power cable. Make sure it's securely in. And then I can put the plug in there directly into it. That's why I did it this setup. But actually, that I've got um, one with a, a surge protector around the back. Instead of that extension, which is, you know, I'm going to put it in the surge protector one. So if you can see, this one's got surge protection on it. So I'm going to be putting it in there. Make sure that it's got no caps on it or anything. I need to come off. And then just plug it in accordingly. Make sure the protection's on. So that is there. Make sure that's plugged in securely. And you see what I've done with the alcove is it's good because I have to have enough space to actually lift this up when I'm putting new inks in. And when you want to use a scanner, you've got to make sure you've got enough space to put the item in to scan, you see. So it's no good, for example, me putting it under there because that's just going to cause me to have less headspace. So um, it's really important. Just done 12 and now we're on 13. Just hold the power button until the lamp turns on. So are we ready? Looks like they pull this up. Oh, yeah, that's a neat feature, isn't it? Pull that up to you. Well, like that. And then you have to hold down the power button until the lamp turns on. So let's do this. Presumably they mean the light. And then the next stage is to select um, what language you want to use for the printer. I live in the UK and I'm English and it's touch screen. So I'm just going to touch that one there and then I'm going to touch that again there. Daylight saving time. Yep, I like that on. We have to do the date. I like the month, day and year. 10th of the 3rd. And you just have to press the final two different digits. So one and nine. And then hit the OK button. Um, 24 hour format. So we've got to now wait for it to say starting. Oh, I love it. It's coming to life. See the start here sheet to complete the installation. 
So it says hold in the instructions to hold this for three seconds. Okay. One, two, three. Confirm the ink tanks are filled with ink. Okay. Oh. I have to charge the ink now. Oh. This makes a bit of a noise, doesn't it? That's good. I'm really happy I've finally got my printer. So it says in the instructions it's going to take about 10 minutes to charge the ink, so we've just got to wait till this is finished. Um, this process now so you've just got to leave it to do its thing for 10 minutes and come back to it so I'm going to switch this off now because it's going to be a bit boring if you just stood here watching it all the time and come back to it in a bit and go off and do some more tasks make best use of your time make a cup of tea listen to a video motivational video go do some work so once your inks are fully charged after 10 minutes it will have this message come up initialization complete move on to print quality adjustments so you need to have paper ready for this and at hand so let's tap the screen align the printer to get the best print quality recommended perform a print head nozzle check to print check print quality now it says print but we've got nothing to print it so to perform adjustments when the paper loading message is displayed, see step. Well, it says lo paper loading message, but at the moment I can't see a paper loading message, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in anyway because I don't want it to run on empty. Um, make sure your paper's fanned as well. It does say this in the manual. Make sure you've fanned it, you know, to make sure it's not sticking together and that, that it's flat. You know, no curly edges or anything like that. So it can damage the machine. Let's hope this paper fits in. Which is bad. I mean, look at this. It's not going in right. When you put the paper in, make sure the two sliders are fully back. You know, you've got these grips here to pull them forward because this is how you adjust it for envelopes. You want your paper to fully fit in and then close this up. So we put paper in now. So if we press print, oh, that's what it says load A4 size paper in the cassette to check nozzle patterns. We've just done that already. I presume you've got to move this out for the paper to come here, otherwise it get jammed, I'm assuming. It doesn't say that though. But you've got to do that. It's a good job I pull that out because I know it's quite common sense, but you know you could forget to do that, couldn't you, if you're not used to it. And then if you didn't have this, you'd already have a paper jam. Uh, check the printer pattern and select the closest result. So is it good or is it broken? Let's have a look at this. So... The black's all right, the Y's all right, the M's not, but the C is. So the pink's missing. Well, that's a bit of a bummer because the black's fine, the yellow's fine, the blue's fine but the magenta is not. Uh, there, so it says, print head requires maintenance. Perform a print head clean. Okay, I know this takes a bit of ink, but let's run it. Let's do this, see what it says. It takes about three minutes to clean it. Well, it's, it's a pain up the bum that I've had to clean it already. I've only just put it on because this does take up some ink but what can you do cleaning do not turn the turn the power off until this until complete this takes about three minutes because that is really poor I mean the, you know the magenta you can't even see oh my god it takes loads of ink look at it 
it's just take I know that it takes some initial ink on charge as well, but just look at how much ink it's taken already. Jeez, no wonder they give you two sets of bottles in with the in with the actual printer. I mean just look at it. No, I, mean, I haven't even used it yet and I'm already having problems with the magenta. Which is not good. Now you can see the ink's used. You can see it very well there. I couldn't see it before when it's full. Yeah, I'm going to have to use those bits of ink by the look of it in there. Well, that's a bit of a pain. No, I don't expect it to go like that. Let's hope this works. So now it's saying print head clean complete. Perform a nozzle check to see if the print head requires cleaning. It's better not done because I just did it. So let's see if this works now. I hope it does. No, it's still exactly the same. You can barely see it. It just looks like a load of dots to me. Very faded. That's worse than that one. Let's push yes to the pattern. Align print position to fix miss. So now it's asking me to select the pattern that shows no gap or dark lines for alignment. So this is what I printed out. And to be honest, they've all got dark lines. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really know what it's implying by that. The number one's clearly got a little bit of a gap. Number two, I can't tell any gap. Number three, I can't tell any gap. Four, I can. It's not quite right straight. Five, I can. And six, I can. But between two and three, I can't really see much difference, can you? I, I can't see really any difference at all. I'm trying to examine them thoroughly. So I don't know whether to put two or three. I mean, let's have a really close examine. I just think two's more fainter and three's more darker. I think I'm going to go for three. My instincts say three, so let's just put three. It's about the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. Vertical alignment, load A4 paper into the concept 